and welcome to Nature Revisited. On this episode, I would like to introduce you to Jeffrey Reddick. I have been corresponding with Jeffrey ever since garden designer and author Gordon Hayward, whom I had the privilege of interviewing for negotiating with nature, suggested that I speak with Jeffrey for the film. But you just can't email Jeffrey or call him on your phone. You see, Jeffrey is serving a lifetime sentence in a North Carolina prison. I was not able to secure an interview with Jeffrey at the time of the filming. But when I started thinking of doing my podcast, Nature Revisited, Jeffrey was one of the first persons I thought of. And this March, I was able to arrange a phone interview from North Carolina. Here then is Jeffrey's story and the interview with him. But first, let's start with Gordon Hayward. I first learned about Jeffrey Reddick about 10 years ago. An article on a garden that I had designed in Peterborough, New Hampshire, appeared in Traditional Home Magazine. And the library of the Medium Security Correctional Institution in North Carolina, where he is incarcerated for life, carried a subscription to Traditional Home Magazine. So Jeffrey read about the garden that I had designed, and at the back of the article, he found my address and contact information. And so a couple of weeks later, early November of 2009, I received the most extraordinary letter with a painting that Jeffrey had done. And therein began a 10-year correspondence between the two of us. Every time that Jeffrey's uh, envelopes arrive in our Putney, Vermont post office, everybody in the post office knows that it's a letter for me because Jeffrey will oftentimes cut two eight and a half by 11 manila envelopes and, and paste the two together so that he has a double sized envelope. And then he paints a farm scene tulip scenes of what he calls his florals, along with letters. And he doesn't just write on a single piece of paper. He will scotch tape four or five, eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper so that we end up with almost a scroll. And the letters that he explores time and again show his deep, a relationship with the natural world. The best I can piece together from these 10 years of correspondence is that Jeffrey grew up largely on his grandmother's tobacco farm in North Carolina. And I think it could have been one of the happiest times of his life. Uh, one of his paintings shows his grandmother's house, the barn, the horses and the corral, the carriage out in the, in the driveway. There's this beautiful feeling of equanimity and peace in this drawing that he's done of his grandmother's property. So he left there having taken a, a couple courses in horticulture, I believe, up to the high school level. And he went into the Marines. And at that point, he came off the rails and ended up at the correctional facility in North Carolina for the rest of his life. One of the qualities of Jeffrey's letters and his paintings is that he incarcerated as he is for life, remains in touch with the natural world through his imagination and through his writing, and of course, through his art. But what he's doing, I believe, is to look to nature for a source of solace, a peace of mind, all of the things that we, who live our lives as free as can be, 
we take for granted. Jeffrey takes not one moment uh, with the natural world for granted because it's not in his purview, it's not in his life to be able to go walking in the woods. And so he recreates images from the natural world that will create calmness and a sense of peace within him. But then he takes it the next step and wants to share that with people who are way beyond the correctional facility that he's living in. Come on in, Jeff. All right, so I'm going to get Jeff for the telephone, okay? Thank you. Stefan, how you doing? Jeffrey. Yes, 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 sir. This is me. This is me. How are you? As well as I possibly can. So, are you ready for a little interview? Yes, I think I am. I think I the best okay. I possibly can do. All right. My first question is, yes. where are you from, and what was life like before your incarceration? Well, basically, uh, I'm from um, Martin County. Uh, it is a small town of North Carolina. My grandmother had a farm. My aunt had a farm. And my other aunt had a farm. Well, you know, when I was young, we got, uh, she had a old, an old farm store she had. And behind the store, she had some apple trees, you know, the old apple trees, you know what I mean? And the farmhouse that they're staying at, I think it was built in the 1800s. And even her farm store, like the store was a store that where they sold slacks to the people who, who had a job on the farm. Uh, I went to school and I was into a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? Getting high and everything up there, so, you know what I mean? I don't know if I can say that I have a perfect livelihood, but I was able to uh, graduate. And uh, even after that, I uh, entered into a North Carolina uh, State uh, Agricultural Institute, but I had some plans of to get my associate degree, you know, because the majority of my people are, I have farmland, and I think I made a big, big mistake and I left NC State and I enjoyed the Marine Corps because I found that I wasn't a a good fit. You know what I mean? I had some job, part-time job. Uh, I ain't gardening. Uh, I just used to do some gardening for Bonnie Conway uh, who had a business, you know what I mean, in town. Uh, he was a builder. So what happened to put you in prison? Well, basically, uh, uh, robbery, theft, BAE, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, what is your sentence? <laughs> it's real big, you know what I mean? Are you there for life? Yeah, uh -huh, yes. How old were you when, when you were incarcerated? Um, see, I came in and here when I was in my early 30s. Yeah. Now, in corresponding with you, yeah. I, love your, I love your letters. They're beautiful, and I, and I love what you do with the envelopes. Yeah. Um, I noticed that you don't talk about prison life. I have I had some, a tragedy of, in my life, you know what I mean? And... Prison life uh, is very hectic, you know. It's 24 men in a dorm. You got two top beds, you know what I mean? It's a bunk. It's not a lot of space. You know. Do you have a garden at your correctional facility? No, I should. I don't. If there was a garden, would you go out and garden? I, I probably would, you know what I mean? And you were, how old were you when you were incarcerated? In my 30s. And how old are you today? <laughs> too, too old. 
<laughs> uh, because, you know, when you reach your 67, 68, you know what I mean? It is an old age. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Some of the early paintings that he, he sent us, along with the decorated envelopes, were all about his grandmother's farm. The barns, the house, the horses, the fencing, the tobacco fields in the background. So he's able to create artworks that grow out of his actual memories as well as his imaginings. And I think that notion of self-expression is a very big part of what it is to be a human being. That is, every day of our lives, we are searching for ways within our society, within our community, within our home, to express ourselves, to share who we are. And Jeffrey, shut off from the world, has found a way to express himself and then to send that expression out to other people. And I find that very humbling. How often do we write letters to people? And Jeffrey's doing it all the time. That he has found a way to create his own solace, his own peace of mind. He's come to terms with what his life has become. He's not looking back in anger of any description. He is a positive, thoughtful, creative individual. This is a man we need to listen to because what I think he's got to teach us is that even in the most dire of situations, he finds through his imagination links to the natural world, links to gardens, links to things that we so take for granted that we don't even see them in front of our own noses. And Jeffrey has found a way through nature to a kind of inner peace. I think that the reason why I got into artwork is because I wanted to do some scenes of the farm atmosphere. You know what I mean? Now, I always into artwork. Now, I was already doing some artwork, you know, flower scene, some tulip scene. So, therefore, what I thought, it would be good to do an old country horse farm scene, an old barn, an old stable that my grandmother had, and to put it in a art that people could relate to. I'm curious as to how nature, why that's important to you. Well, basically, flower, it creates a beauty. You see, the main reason why I'm doing some flowers now is because during my young days, even during the time I was in school, I used to help a school teacher in his garden and in his flower. A flower is the most well loved art in the world, you know what I mean? And uh used to spend a lot of time in the woods. Even my father, he had a farm there in the woods. It is a thing that sits in my mind. It is a vision, you know what I mean? It is a thing that I can relate to interact with, you know what I mean? And I think a lot of people, even in the world, can communicate on that level. Wildflowers, you know, the tulips, you know, the uh, strawberries. It is a thing that an individual uh, grow up and he is in a contact with, you know what I mean? You, you see, because even I have a vision that I can see a lot of things that I have seen years ago. You know, the dirt road, the farm trees, the scrubbery. So how imp how important do you think a relationship is to nature? I think that those experiences 
that a person have encountered during those past years or his upbringing I seem to always stick in his heart, you know what I mean? The only way I can do flower scene or old farm houses, the reason why I, I do tulips, you know what I mean? I think tulips are the most well beloved flower in the world. You choose because uh, even during the time I was in eighth grade, and I had an art teacher there who uh, he introduced me to a lot of impressionists. You know what I mean? Artwork, you know what I mean? Fabia, Matisse. Now and again, in Jeffrey's letters, I, I come across these striking moments where he will say, "And my favorite painter is Van Gogh." And then he will go on in his letter. He will write about. Uh, Cezanne, and he'll write about Van Gogh. And what he loves about Van Gogh is the florals, he calls them. That is, these extraordinary paintings of sunflowers that Van Gogh did. And so what Jeffrey has focused on is the tulip, which he regards as the most beautifully shaped flower that he knows. Another thing that he gets into is poetry. Here, for example, is a poem that he sent us beautifully illustrated with all sorts of florals and people standing in flower gardens. He writes, as a little girl, as her friends can recall so vividly, and interwoven with a radiant smile, but on a Sunday afternoon, On Grandmom's farm, watching the bluebirds dancing in the rain, suddenly overwhelmed by nature's wildflowers blooming everywhere. Ah, this is where I'd rather be, in the midst of life's everlasting serenity. To me, that bespeaks a centered individual. This is a man who has come to terms over his many, many years of incarceration with the fact that he is a prisoner. So you also mentioned to me that Catherine Hepburn and Bob Hope have some of your paintings? Catherine Hepburn, when she lived in her Fifth Avenue apartment, she had about four of my paintings. Now, I actually sent her about three of my paintings, you, you see, I still have a note because she have the a last word that she sent to me from her Fifth Avenue apartment, a Bob Hogan. Now, the kind of painting that I sent him, a golf scene. You see, I was hiding a guy in AA, and he was the one who made a comment that J.F. used to say, but Bob Hope, you know, about I said, I do not know his, you know, actually, but he told me to send it to director of the Palm Spring Country Club hey, in Palm Spring, California. He forwarded the pain to Bob Hope, and Bob Hope, you know, he responded to me. <laughs> so why are gardens and gardeners, why are you, why are you drawn to them? It's life. Now, I think it is deeply interwoven in the lifestyle, you know what I mean, of everybody. It's life is. Do most of your in, your fellow inmates know that you paint? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. But the thing about the painting I do, don't nobody do the kind of painting I do. Where the type of style in which I use is an old art style I like. I like the you know, the old impressionist style, the old still life. <laughs> you see, and the reason I use the two is because of the hues you got, you know. It's the colors, you know, it's the attractiveness. Every single letter, every word of every letter that he has sent me over the last 10 years is colorful, thoughtful, and respectful. So why does Jeffrey's story matter? It seems to me 
that we can learn a new way to relate not only to nature, but to other people around the subject of nature. What I've learned from Jeffrey is that our ability to express ourselves is right at the core of who and what we become. That is, everything that you and I do every day is a form of self-expression. Self-expression is something we think is not readily available to a, an incarcerated person like Jeffrey. And when he, in all his lack of freedom, is so open and so willing to express himself, to share who he is, that we who are free take that freedom for granted and oftentimes don't express our feelings, don't share who we are, don't write letters, don't send paintings to our friends. But also, we take the natural world so for granted when it is the source. It's where we came from. And Jeffrey knows that because he can't have that. Yet we have it every day of our lives. So when I go out into our garden with Jeffrey's life in mind, I think about the extraordinary freedom that I have to express myself. We treasure what we have in part because of the contrast with Jeffrey's life. I think when it comes to nature, when it comes to our surroundings, I think even being in here, uh, I have a thing, I will just say, uh, because even being in here, I still have an appreciation for, you know, nature and its beauty. I'm able to share the things that I embrace even while being uh, in this institution. To me, I think nature itself and the foundation of the creation of the world, you know, it has been here even before man has stepped foot upon this earth. You know what I mean? And I think that really... It is the real beauty of the world. You know what I mean? Because basically when you speak of nature, it's something that is not man-made. And I think that um, it's good to even have a chance to even share some of the things about me when it comes to, you know, my thoughts on nature and the world and the wildlife, you know, the trees, the wildflowers, and, and all of that there. You know what I mean? And, and, and really, all of that, it is true. It's the real beauty of the world right there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. So so you keep painting. Okay, it's good just to hear you, you know what I mean? We're going to keep writing. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, too. Okay. And please tell uh, Gordon... I said, hello, you know what I mean? I will. Okay. I'm going to be talking with them in about two weeks. Oh, no, thank you. I would like to thank you for listening to this episode of Nature Revisited. And I do hope you enjoyed getting to know Jeffrey Reddick. If you would like to view his paintings or possibly write to him, please visit our website, nordenproductions.com. That's Norden, N-O-O-R-D-E-N productions.com. This podcast was produced by Charles Gagan, Annie Bond, and myself, Stefan Van Norden. 
I do hope you will join us for the next edition of Nature Revisited. And in the meantime, remember, we are nature. Thank you.